Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you the basics of using Tracker. And so I'm going to pull up Tracker here. And it opens up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open a video. Now I've got one selected here that has a low friction cart in red on a track. It's that green. The orange thing is a one meter bar put in the frame for the purposes of setting a scale. And so what we're going to do is we're going to watch the video. And notice this number over here. That is the frame counter. We're not really interested in analyzing what happened at the very beginning or after the cart goes off the track. What we're interested in analyzing is the time when the cart was moving. So I'm going to grab this. We're going to see right when the cart starts moving and the person lets go. So that's frame 93. Rem remember that. 93 and it runs off the track here at about frame 165. So I'm going to click right here. I'm going to say the start frame was 93. The end frame was 165. Now, if you're doing many, many hundreds of frames, you can set a step size here. Instead of one, you could set it to five or 10. So you skip over frames. I don't want to do that. I have less than 100 frames, and that's no big deal. Um, also, wanted to point out here the frame rate. This video was shot at 30 frames per second, and that's a standard video rate. However, we do have a high-speed camera. It shoots at 300 frames per second or 600 or 1200. Also, your cell phone might, um, your cell phone might, and you may have a cell phone. If it records like a high speed mode, it might do 120 frames per second. That's something to check on your cell phone if you're using it. So anyway, just pointing that out. We're gonna, um, we can also click down here in the lower right hand corner. And when we do that and we hit play, it will only play the section that we marked. Only the part that we're interested in, and it will loop it. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to go back to the beginning frame here. Next thing to click on is this to do a new calibration stick. Notice it's this blue thing here. Now it defaults to 100 for because probably the most common calibration stick is to use 100 centimeters. Um, so there it is. So you put the little cross marks at the end, at the end of your scale bar. If it's not 100 centimeters, then you want to change this number. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it 1.000 meters. Tracker doesn't really know what units you're using. So you have to keep track of what the units are. Once you set that scale, you can move it out of the way just so that it's not uh, near where you're clicking uh, with the car. Next thing to do, click here, is to set a coordinate system. And that coordinate system, here's the origin. You can put it wherever you want. You can also grab this. This marks the x-axis. And in fact, you can rotate it any way you want. So if you have something rolling downhill, or if the camera was a little tilted on its tripod, you can align the coordinate system with um, uh, with your your situation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the coordinate system right here. I'm going to be clicking on the yellow dot, uh, but I don't want to actually accidentally rotate the coordinate system while I'm doing that. So I'm going to put it a little bit out of the way. You can move it after the fact. Uh, next I'm going to, uh, well, now we're done the setup. We're done the setup. So we're ready to start actually clicking on points and uh, so you go here to create point mass is what you're usually going to use. Point mass. And notice it says mass A here. And notice it says down here, it gives you a little reminder, shift click to mark. So on the car, I have a yellow sticker here. So I'm holding down the shift key and I'm going to click on the center of that yellow sticker. And I put the sticker on there so I'd have a nice feature to click on. Notice that every time I click, I don't know if you can hear the clicks, 
or not, but every time I click, it advances to the next frame. And I'm trying to be as careful as I can here, marking the location of that yellow sticker. And I'm going to have to do this, well, it was almost 100 times, which really just takes a couple minutes. But if you're just sitting there watching the video, it's going to be pretty boring. So feel free to skip ahead in the video until you see me reach the end. I'm not going to say anything else significant, so you won't miss anything. So go ahead and skip to the end, and I'll see you at the far side. This is a little tedious. Again, not too bad. It's really just been a couple minutes, two or three minutes here. You really want to take some care, though. Again, if you were doing many hundreds of frames, though, you'd set that step size to skip over so you're not doing every single frame. So if you're listening to me now, you really just did not skip ahead. And but we're getting close to the end. Okay, we've reached the end, and uh, welcome back. And I can now play the video again and see all those red dots that's indicating the location of the cart in each of those frames. You can go up here, and I actually don't find the numbers by the dots all that helpful. So you can turn the numbers on and off on the dots. So I'm going to have them off. And by clicking right here, I can have it show all the dots, all the marks. Now, as I was clicking, I hope you noticed over here and the video is playing that you notice this graph. I'm going to go ahead and make the graph bigger by dragging the border here and dragging this down. And there's the graph of X on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. And as the video plays, it marks the current frame position. And if you look at that just casually, you'll notice eh, it looks more or less straight. But if you actually you know, put a ruler up against the screen and look at it carefully, or look at the screen from an angle, you'll see that that line is curved. And it is showing that, um, look at the slope down here compared to here. And I think, uh, I think you'll agree that the slope here later in the coasting is less than the slope down here. In other words, the cart has slowed down. It's a low friction cart, but it's not a zero friction cart. You can come over here and you can click on the X component of the velocity. And you'll see that it looks pretty ugly. It looks pretty ugly. It's noisy because those points are so close together. If you're off by one pixel, if you're off by one pixel, then it makes a big difference when you have those points so close to each other. But uh, I think you'll agree that overall the trend is downwards. The trend is downwards. Now I'm going to hit pause on the video. And we can go back to... But we can right click on it, and we've got some options here. Um, we can hit Analyze. So now we have another window with Analyze. And we can put on a curve fit. That is, we can do a best fit line. 
It doesn't have to be a straight line. We could do parabolas and other functions. But this was the velocity graph. We're going from roughly 0 0.46, 0 0.47 meters per second to about, was that, 0.32 meters per second, 47 centimeters per second to 32 centimeters per second um, by taking kind of the average of the points, uh, a best fit line uh, through the trend of the data. So that's the basics of how to use Tracker. And uh, you're going to now be analyzing your own video that you shoot and uh, have a lot of fun with it.